Or just looking, gets it to Bryant. Bryant dribbling, has to put it up with the buzzer. Banks it in! Oh, he banks in the three! Looking in for Irving. Irving for the win! Scoring. Something that's been getting done for decades now in the NBA. Early on, we looked at guys like Jerry West, Wilt Chamberlain, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar to lead this pack. As time prolonged, we watched bags get deeper, shots get more tough. Names like George Gervin, Michael Jordan, Allen Iverson, they started to become relevant, paving the ways for household names we know and love today, like the late Kobe Bryant, Carmelo Anthony, and Kevin Durant. As the beauty of the game continued to grow, iconic moments in the scoring industry like LeBron James becoming the NBA's all-time leading scorer occurred, officially passing the torch from someone we know and loved like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Now all of a sudden, 70-point performances become more regular and players are just getting better. Oftentimes we ask ourselves, are players getting better on offense or are players getting worse on defense? And to be completely honest, I think it's a little bit of both, but like all good things, time passes and things come to an end. The era of LeBron James, Steph Curry, and Kevin Durant dominating your favorite NBA teams are slowly but surely coming to an end. As I say that statement, I encourage you to ask yourself, is that such a bad thing? The art of scoring will not die with them. In fact, it'll grow with the future. Today, we'll talk about three names that I think will be the next generation of this league's scoring. Now, fundamentally, scoring is just the idea that you can put the basketball inside of that hoop that we all love. But in reality, it's so much more than that. We've heard countless, and I mean countless, criticisms in regards to people like Giannis Antetokounmpo, who can give you 30 points a night, but they don't do it with the art of scoring. Maybe they're bigger, maybe they're stronger, maybe they're just faster than the opposing defense, but maybe they don't have that I'm going to score on you anywhere at any time mindset. For example, I pose for you a question. If there's 10 seconds left and it's a tie ball game and you're on the road, the crowd is loud and you need a bucket. Are you rolling the ball out to Giannis Antetokounmpo or are you rolling it out to Tracy McGrady? I'd like to think you'd be more inclined to pick Tracy McGrady, but that doesn't make Tracy a better player, it doesn't make him a better athlete, it doesn't mean he has a better resume. But when it comes to putting the ball in the hoop from anywhere on the floor, you may opt to go with Tracy. You may hope he even gets fouled and goes to the charity stripe and ends up sinking the free throws and not getting a 10 second violation. But who is the future of this question? I think it's Shea Gildress Alexander, Luka Doncic, and Anthony Edwards. When you look at the three names that I just listed, and to quote one of them in specific, Everything they do is consistent. Uh, my whole life is consistent. Uh, everything I do. Shea Gildress Alexander has consistently been one of the NBA's top scorers and for the last couple seasons been one of the top winners. Last season, the Oklahoma City Thunder were the youngest one seed in NBA history. And this has a lot to do with someone like Shea finishing top three in NBA MVP voting consistently, averaging nearly 30 points consistently, and stepping up in every other facet of his game. Something that will always make an offensive threat like Shea more valuable is his ability to be gifted at scoring the basketball, pairing it with someone who can rebound, someone who can make timely passes, someone who's a threat on defense. When defenders have to game plan for someone who's more than just a one-dimensional scorer in a one-dimensional matchup, it's something that ends up reaping lots of benefits for said scorer. This is why guarding Luka Doncic is so difficult. Luka's a three-level scoring threat who you could argue needs to be doubled from pretty much anywhere beyond half court. His ability to contort his body, use his size with his lack of athleticism, into manipulating his way to the free throw line is something that makes him such an impressive score, similar to the way that James Harden was. Obviously, Luka carries the bag. He has big plays, he has big step backs, the floater, the three-point shot, the buzzer beater wins in clutch time. Anything you want done, Luka can handle on the offensive side of the basketball court. He's also had professional basketball experience way before his time in the NBA and really just knows the game of basketball, which is why I think for the next few generations, he's going to be extremely special. Luka will be someone we continue to talk about for the next hundred years of basketball when we're all long gone. People will still continue to talk about how Luca was not drafted first you know it's going to be one of those questions and then there's Anthony Edwards Michael Jordan's long lost son according to some he's a three level scorer who's insanely athletic and has the mindset of I'm going to rip your face off with a smile on mine 
One of Anthony's best qualities is he's growing into more of a savvy NBA player. Something I love about Anthony is that he possesses the ability to be patient when he's getting to his spots. This is probably my favorite part about Luka Doncic's game is that he's patient. He doesn't let defenders in specific manipulate him into making the wrong moves. And I think that Anthony Edwards is starting to like I said, possess that quality that Luka Doncic has. Because when we see these guys, Shea, Luka, and Ant, all three of them are insanely talented mid-range scorers. When they get to that 12 to 18 feet, oftentimes we're taking their time with bumps and just getting into that fadeaway jump shot. And with Ant in specific, his three-pointer off the dribble has been way better than last year. His three-point shot in transition has been phenomenal. And if you're tough enough to meet Ant at the rim, well, I... I advise you not to. He's either going to dunk all over you or he's going to contort his body in a way that manipulates a nice and one or a nice layup off the glass similar to the likes of Kyrie Irving. There are names on this list that were not selected, but this is my big three, my, you know, three out of the four of my Mount Rushmore, if you will, for the future of scoring. But what do you guys think? I want to know. I know this was a quick video, but I want to know what you think in the comments below. Who is going to dominate the NBA in scoring for the next 10 to 20 years? Let me know in the comments below. If you made it this far, you know I appreciate all sport as always. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Stay happy, up, and blessed. Peace.